Hey, my name's Peter Coffin, and I was just thinking to myself, you know, I don't really know who the baddies are right now. I keep seeing all this war crap on the news, and I don't have a lot of input in terms of war. So whether it's Islamophobia versus anti-Semitism, Republican versus Democrat, I can't decide who's the baddie. You know, I think what I need is some YouTubers to hate. Are there any YouTubers have done like something justifiably hateable, something really easy to get people to hate? I don't know, something where there's like a law or something that we don't interrogate because we've naturalized it and act as though it's just simply an inherent thing that's wrong that they're they're you know crossing the line on. Oh, what's this? An H bomber guy video about YouTube plagiarists. All right. And I know that you're thinking to yourself, okay, all right, like a good little YouTube viewer, I clicked your video, I clicked like, I subscribed, I rang the bell, I did all that stuff. Now you got to tell me this insane opinion you have about how plagiarism is awesome. And well, it's not. It's not a cool thing to do. But over the course of this video, I'm going to ask you to consider an alternative view. It's not really so much that it is a good or a bad thing, but instead a result of circumstances and conditions. Now, H. Bomber Guy starts by showing us an example of some authors who took it to the man and won. He notes to us that this happens almost never, and he says to us, that's just what you gotta expect. You can spend ages on a unique video with an original idea, and a way more popular guy can rip it off, along with its thumbnail, get a bajillion views, and rake in the cash. On YouTube, if you have an original idea, if it's good, it won't be yours for long. Why? Why does that happen? So, four hours later he tells you, Why do people plagiarize? We've talked a lot of superficials in this video, wanting money or prestige or clout or to get one over on your enemies by jacking their stuff, but these are small things. There's other ways of getting those. The reason humans copy like this, I think, goes a bit deeper. We don't exactly live in a world built for humans, do we? There's no guidebook for happiness or success or a sense of place in the world. And the people claiming to have one for you are really just trying to sell you something. We spend most of our little lives struggling to make these feelings fade away, or find something to placate them. It's either ennui, or being on weed. <laughs> I know it's a little pretentious, but we're all searching for a sense of meaning and purpose in our lives, and those things are hard to come by. There's a little bit of nothing in all of us, and we'd like to fill it with something. Opening your web browser and seeing someone who seems to have it figured out, making you feel better and entertaining you, and seeming to attract an audience on this roulette wheel of a planet, that's powerful. There's someone who seems to understand what they're supposed to be doing, and it's working. That's all anyone really wants. Sure, in retrospect, a bunch of people wanting to be exactly like the AVGN sounds silly, but he knew who he was. He was the angriest gamer you've ever heard. We can laugh, in fact, you're supposed to, but that's a human being with purpose. There's someone who's not anxious about their place in the world anymore. It's very difficult not to want that completeness for yourself, not to just be like someone, but to be them, to attain that sense of knowing. All right, so there is some truth in what he's saying. There is a lack of meaning in the world, that's true, right? That's not false, but plagiarism is not the plot of Highlander, okay? You don't kill them to become them. That's not it. That's not how war is. That's not how this is. Battles that are fought in the real world are fought over material conditions, right? And the same thing goes for plagiarism. But that's not what's discussed in the four-hour runtime of this video. In fact, the closest that H-Bomb gets to discussing intellectual property law, or IP law, the actual issue at hand, the uh, formalized reason that plagiarism exists, the only discussion of that, and it's quite sparse, uh, but the only discussion of that in this video takes a very naturalistic stance towards law. Law exists. 
Here's the thing about law. Law is neither natural uh, or neutral. It's the product of systems of power. That is to say, socioeconomic systems, the structures that dictate how the world runs. Laws come from that. So who is the ruling class in capitalism? It's the capitalists. So who does the law ultimately serve? Well, the ruling class, the capitalists. But even by answering a few simple questions, we get into talking about systems. And that's not what H-Bomb wants to do. I'm not smart enough to know what we're supposed to do about plagiarism. I think trying to fix it in any systemic way could risk making it worse. Let's imagine YouTube introduced some kind of plagiarism claim system. We'd be expecting someone at YouTube to be able to decide whether something is plagiarism or not. And I don't like the idea of YouTube having any more power than they already have. So in my eyes, there's uh, there's two major problems with this. The first one, the obvious one, um, he just outright discourages looking at this systemically. He straightforwardly says, don't even think about fixing this systemically. I think he does that because this is a four hour goddamn video and he doesn't talk about systems. He spends the entire time parading around examples of people doing plagiarism on YouTube and saying hashtag do better. It's important that individuals take more responsibility here. And any time he even vaguely approaches the border of individual responsibility, uh, he tiptoes up to it, looks down, has a nervous look on his face, and he turns around and he marches right back because if I go any further, I'm going to sound like Peter Coffin. <laughs> no, but I have to assume that he turns his ass back around every time he gets close to that border because it's a four-hour video. There is absolutely zero chance that over the months that it took him to make this video, it never occurred to him that we could go deeper, that we could talk about systems. He had to come up with something at the end to justify why he didn't talk about the economic system. That's what that is. Now, the point of my video isn't Hey, H-Bomber guy's a baddie because he doesn't do the right things according to what I think. I'm not calling H-Bomb a baddie here. I'm not trying to direct you towards attacking him. I'm just not that kind of creator, okay? And whether H-Bomb is or isn't, this video is that type of video. It's pointing out a bunch of baddies out there for you to hate, for you to dislike, for you to go after and attack. And if you don't think that's what it is, here's H Bomber Guy's producer saying, hey team, I made a post for all of you to post your additional plagiarism discoveries and recommend excellent queer YouTubers so we can get our plans in motion. Uh, you see, what this is, is a Reddit post that makes sure you know it's positive by recommending some good queer YouTubers first and then make space for the juice. What's the juice, you might ask? Well, it's a list of people to cancel. It's Internet Historian, who's a big baddie. Summerton is a baddie. We a Boss is a baddie. Johnny Harris is a baddie. Internet historian is still a baddie. I guess James Stephanie Sterling is both a baddie and a queer creator worth recommending. <laughs> oh, and an internet historian, also uh, a baddie. Uh, of course, Tumblr picked up on the whole hashtag do better message and really went for it. Internet historians all right anyways. Great day to have never liked James Summerton. Never even heard of Illuminati before this, LOL. That's great, buddy, but don't go around thinking you're immune to this. If you're not looking for plagiarism, you likely won't notice it unless it's egregiously obvious. Hell, you've probably consumed plagiarized content without realizing it. Oh, you're the baddie. You just, you, you need to hashtag do better with your content consumption, folks, okay? Even H-Bomb pointed out that these people disguise what they presented pretty well, as long as you didn't try and dig deeper. Don't come away just thinking of this as a call-out piece. Take this as an important lesson about vetting your sources. If Googling scripts and quotes was enough to expose the original, we should all start doing this shit! 
So remember how a few seconds ago I said that the laws of a society are generally set up to protect the ruling class of a society, in our case, in capitalism, the capitalists. Intellectual property law doesn't actually really protect like individual creators. It protects the class that owns everything. Now, I'm a Marxist, so when I talk about class, I'm talking about it qualitatively. If you are the owning class, if your relationship to means of production is owning, that means you are the bourgeoisie, the ruling class. How we're talking about laws right now very easily maps onto that, but it's not just qualitatively that it works. It also works quantitatively, even within the subordinate class. If you're a creator with less resources than the person stealing from you, you're probably shit out of luck. In fact, H-Bomb says that explicitly in this video. We actually started off with this quote, but I want to play it again real quick. You can spend ages on a unique video with an original idea, and a way more popular guy can rip it off, along with its thumbnail, get a bajillion views, and rake in the cash. On YouTube, if you have an original idea, if it's good, it won't be yours for long. Here's the problem. Anytime he mentions intellectual property law, copyright law, Anytime he mentions that, it's just about how it is enforced, uh, specifically badly, how it's enforced badly. But then he goes on to tell us that if there were more tools for enforcement, that would also be bad. I think trying to fix it in any systemic way could risk making it worse. So ultimately, all that we can ever really have is just the bad people out there, the bigger creators, the way more popular guy, not the media companies, not the platforms, not the owners of everything, not those people, but people who make content. Those people need to just behave better. If you're a small creator and make a video that's decent and it gets more traffic than anything else on your channel and some bigger creator sees it, rips you off and has a huge success, well, guess what? That is their work now. And that's just how things are. So whether or not plagiarism is good or bad doesn't really matter. Whether or not it's cool to repeat things other people say without crediting them is... I mean, that's an individual moral stance. Um, I don't really give a shit. People rip me off all the goddamn time. People have been doing it for years. And if I was angry about that all day, every day, you know what? I would never not be angry because people always do it. People are making videos like this based on shit I've said for years. And then there's other people who take shit that I have said and warp it so that it's something that services their agenda and makes them sound smart when they have a totally different point than what I wanted to put across. They're stealing things for their own benefit. And if I spent all my fucking time being angry about that, I would be a fucked up, angry person who is obsessed with shit I can't control. Other people. Do you want to know why plagiarism even matters at all? It's systemic incentives. Why aggregate content rather than create it? Well, creativity is labor. It takes energy and focus and time. Aggregating content, yes, it does take those things, but to a lesser extent. And not only does it take less of those things, but it's content that's already proven itself. And understanding that, it becomes pretty easy to see why people plagiarize. It's because it benefits them. Duh. You are incentivized to create videos that get as many people as possible to watch it as quickly as you can. Why would that not incentivize plagiarism? But plagiarism is against the rules. Clearly, they don't want to incentivize that. It doesn't matter. Those rules don't matter. The rules are just formalities created to protect the bourgeoisie when they need protecting. The one example of authors getting recourse against a corporation to demonstrate how nobody gets that done should tell you all about the laws. But instead, we need a baddie list. We need people to cancel. Because you know what? 
That creates a lot of engagement, and it makes you seem like a crusader for good. The reason plagiarism happens in the mode that it does is because it's incentivized and rewarded. The only way to address those things is by changing the system, not by asking people to behave better. And that's why moralistic critique is stupid. It is ill-informed. It is counterproductive. It is something that makes things not change. Now, me making a video on a subject isn't going to change the problem. And I want to draw a very important distinction between what I just said and this. I'm not smart enough to know what we're supposed to do about plagiarism. When you get up and you say, look, I don't really know what to do about this. What you're doing is retreating from your criticism. Criticism is self-evidently what needs to be done. If there's a thing that's happening that's bad, then by doing the criticism, you're saying that thing needs to stop. Then when you say, look, I don't really know what needs to be done, you're retreating. You didn't go far enough with the criticism if you don't know what you're supposed to do. And you did four fucking hours. Of course, an individual can't solve the problem on their own. Duh. We need people with a functioning critique working together, engaging with power. To just say, I don't know, guys, after four fucking hours is just nihilist horseshit. If you did your job, yes, you do know what we have to do. You don't know exactly where it's going to land. You don't know what the future is going to look like, but you know what the problem is, and you know that we, the people, need the power to address that contradiction. You need a mob of people that knows their shit. That's the solution, friends. But no. It's sensationalist blame machine media. That's what this is. I foment a fandom around myself by pointing out the baddies to feel better than. Roblox.wave is the same goddamn thing. It's a bunch of people who did a bad thing that you're not supposed to like. Hell, Bloodborne is awesome and here's why is the same thing. It's telling you that you're bad at Dark Souls because you're using shields. You should use shields, you dumbass. You want to talk pathologic? H-Bomb made a long-ass video about how you're enjoying art the wrong way rather than advocating for why something is good. The video pathologic for people who will never play it, which H-Bomb probably considers plagiarism, is a significantly better video than his own because it understands that there is good content within that game. However, the way it is presented, both mechanically, visually, and any other factors, are things that will keep certain people from getting anywhere near it and instead uses the medium of YouTube to attempt to show people those ideas and that content with a different perspective. I'm sure H-Bomb would tell you that's what his video does, but but no, it tells you that you're wrong in how you enjoy art. You're wrong. You don't know what you're doing. Unless you do, and then come on in, the water's fine. Join the H-Bomb fandom. Become a patron. You'll see the videos before anybody else does. Now, as much as it is fun and cathartic to have a, a nice dunk at the expense of H-Bomb, it's really important that you understand H-Bomb is not the problem, nor am I really even mad at him individually. I don't like the fact that he makes this kind of content. I don't like the fact that it's about blaming and shaming and creating ideologies that divert people away from systemic thinking. I don't like that stuff, and I am pointing out that he individually is making that kind of stuff, but that's not really the problem at the core. The problem is the system of capitalism in its imperial stage, a global system built on top of a contradiction, a contradiction that Frederick Engels so simply summarized in Socialism, Utopian and Scientific, a mode in which production has been socialized. However, the mode of appropriation is retained from the feudal system. So we have private appropriation of product and therefore profit. I am explicitly saying that capitalism is the problem. 
And it didn't even take me four hours. Hope you have a nice day.